Hi, I'm Brent Johnson. And I'm Chris Soar. Today we are at St. John Nepomuk Church in the near south side in St. Louis. We were here a few weeks ago making a video about this organ behind us. Uh, we called it a 1940 Kilgan uh, because it's got a Kilgan nameplate. And the information we have published about the organ said 1940. We didn't actually do any research. Uh, I hate coming in not really knowing things, but this is the great part about these videos is other people see them and then people with knowledge might come up and actually do the research for us. Uh, and that's kind of what's happened with here. Uh, Chris is particularly knowledgeable about uh, Kilgan organs because you have a lot of information in your possession. I do. What? Tell me about what you've got. Um, well, I, I have the uh, books from the company that had the bill of lading information. So whenever an organ would ship, um, they would have some kind of a record of where it went to um, and uh, usually it included a spec. Um, sometimes the books have a price, sometimes they have uh, who built what parts, um, but uh, for the most part it's just a, a kind of a brief opus information. Okay, so you uh, saw the video, you heard it, I know you listened to them, as you I did. said, and, uh, and you, what did you hear that made you stop and think about this instrument, that where it might have actually come from? Well, it was when you were describing the gamba in the Great Division that it was tapered and capped, and, it, and you even described it as like a labial, labial oboe. That's the only place I've seen pipes like that. Exactly. Um, and that, that made me think that, that something wasn't exactly a Kilgan. Mm -hmm. So uh, you went and researched, did some looking through your books? Yeah, I, I went home, uh, I guess a day or so later, and um, I went through the opus lists, and, um, and I couldn't find anything that suggested an, uh, an actual Kilgan instrument from that era. Um, but I saw that Kilgan had made additions and had installed a blower um, at some point in time, or replaced a blower, I should say, and um, had made some other changes and some pipe changes. Um, but not an actual instrument. So Kilgan did something to an existing instrument. Right. Saying that this could be either an earlier Kilgan or some other builder. Exactly. So um, you mentioned that you thought there were some Wix uh, things in here. What did you see that made you think of Wix? So I, I, not only the labial oboe, which, which is a very big staple of Wix of the 20s and, and even into the late teens, um, but also I saw the um, facade had um, action boxes that were perched above the toe boards, which Kilgan would have either tubed off and had an action box below, um, in particular at this age, or they would have had it directly underneath the pipes. And so the fact that it was up like that made me think this is also Wix. Plus, I saw a lot of other little things later on by watching the video again. <laughs> well, we're going to go through again. Um, it's a quiet day in the church. Coronavirus has everybody huddled at home, so there's nobody here. Uh, we don't have anything else to do, so we're going to climb around in the organ a little bit and let him uh, show us uh, some things that maybe might reveal a little more about the history of this instrument. So the one thing that was really even obvious to me uh, was that there's a center panel here yeah. that has been added or replaced or it's different. I mean, it's, it's right in the middle, which is where I would expect a old tracker console might have been. Exactly. Um, yeah, that was the first thing I saw when I came up here. Um, it, it, it's narrow, um, which it's obviously not the full width of a console. Um, but um, sometimes that in, in rearranging instruments, they would bring the case together. So it's possible that that happened when they built this fill-in panel. Um, but very interesting is this, you can see kind of right here where they had drilled for lights and it was the knob and tube style where the, the um, hot and the uh, neutral are separated and then you had a post. So even the little indentations in the case that they've painted over or have done any finish over, you can kind of get an indication that there was some kind of a light installed here, even with electricity, for them to be able to, to see. So uh, another thing is that you'll notice that the, the casework moves at like a 45 here with the tongue and groove. And then you come over here, and the tongue and groove doesn't match. And it's also going um, vertically, so that the, the piece of the board is actually this wide. And yet these are all individual pieces. So that indicates that maybe this panel wasn't original either. So the next thing I would look for is this strange joints in the case, which you can kind of see up here. It's going to be kind of hard to, to see. So it, in, it would indicate that you know maybe they um, split the case or added to the case. Yeah. So after 
figuring out that there was another instrument and that it had Wix parts in it, I called Wix and I, I asked my friend Corey Wright at Wix um, if he would do some research for me. And um, I have a, an opus list from the very early time of Wix, um, probably about 1919 on, or, or earlier. And um, there was no record that this um, had been a Wix of that era. So I was confused because Kilgan's records said that they had done work here in the um, late 20s and early 30s. Um, 1925 actually um, being the earliest record so I was hoping that the wicks would have been from the late teens or early uh, 20s however um, Corey informed me that it was from 1928 so it indicates that even though this was a Kilgan organ it was actually a wicks organ but Kilgan and wicks were working on it simultaneously so it's very strange um, but you know it, it, it's also not unheard of that you would have had such intense competition by two local builders so the, the toe boards, th this is the action box I was talking about, the, a, a Wix action box being up higher. Their valves would be directly behind the pipes. So they would have had to add a toe board that's channeled, has a hole through it for the pipe foot to go into um, this action box. So the fact that they're proud of the case is also something that told me that um, there had been additions or that the facade didn't originally speak or it, if it did speak it had a different toe board and that it was added to. So we'll take the pipe down real quick. This is very strange pipe work too. Um, but you can see that it has a languid um, and often whenever they were dummy pipes they didn't bother to put a languid in. The other thing um, is somebody wrote in here in India ink but um, <laughs> And the top of this being cut like that um, indicates that this was older pipework from an older facade. Um, another trick for regulating was to have the scroll split into two pieces so that way you could do minute adjustments like that um, and instead of doing a, a whole lot. So um, that wasn't really common with wicks though, so this is very interesting. Uh, but here's indication that, you know, it has a toe. This is going to be interesting to put that back on its hook. And so when you're taking facade pipes out, make sure that you have it hooked before you let go, otherwise they'll fall and they will do damage or hurt you. And once you get it up there, you're not twist. It shouldn't move too terribly much or it should stay in place. Um, so these guys over here though, Despite the fact that it looks like it's an action box, we'll find when I take the pipe away, it's actually just because it has the diapason chest right below it. Um, so this is another one of the strange facade. They had stamped it with the number two, which meant it was number two in this bay. Um, but you can see it doesn't have a languid. Um, Kilgans often, or at least uh, Kilgans of the, the 20s and 30s that I've seen, when, when it's a dummy pipe, it's a waste of time to go through and do all the processes of uh, building a pipe properly. So they would just put tacks of solder on there instead of doing an entire solder seam like this. So it's very strange that you've got Kilgan indications as far as um, pipe construction, and then yet there's things that say that it's not Kilgan. So again, we go back to what uh, Wix had in their files, and they have a drawing file. But in the drawing, it indicated um, that they added to the case, as we expected. Um, but then also, it indicated with a letter that the organist um, noticed that there was a stained glass window behind the organ that had been covered by the old organ, and that these facade pipes had been longer, and they wanted to make sure that they didn't uh, block them again. So they had Wix redesign the facade and make it to where it was shorter. So I was looking for that whenever I came here to see if I could find any indications of that, and um, the fact that these are dummy pipes and that they look like they've been cut um, to try to you know, cup around what, what exists of a window. But then also that these posts have a joint up there and it might be um, a little hard to see, but there's a place where these posts have been much longer and that they had cut them off and then reattached them. And, and it's, it's kind of hard to see, but if you get the light in just the right place, you can see where that there had been a, a joint. Um, so another indication that something had been done to change the case from what it was. Yeah, so another interesting thing to me is, is this, this base molding. Um, a lot of times, and what I've been finding in, in 
instruments around 1890 to about 1910 or so is that these base moldings are really tall, like this one is. Um, uh, whenever we get into the 1920s and even into the 30s, they start getting shorter and shorter. I'm not exactly sure what the reason was, if it was a style thing or maybe it was a height thing, and because the cases were taller, you want everything in proportion. Um, but that indicates that this was taller and that it was an older case. Um, the wood is different too, and we'll see that from the inside, is, is that the wood is totally different, um, and it's definitely old growth versus using what they started doing in the 20s, using plywood. That's cool. There's a whole bunch of Wix instruments from the early part of the company that they don't know, well, we don't know that they were built because they were just building instruments. They didn't really care about keeping records at the time. And um, so there's a period of time where Wix has some voids in the opus numbers, and we're talking very early, like 1908, 1909. Um, and so the stenciling in here, even though it's, it's on a Wix chest, so Wix would have intended this pipe work to go here. This was deliberately done. This wasn't added by anyone else. But the stenciling indicates that they used old pipe work from either another church or from this church. And it's possible, being so close, that Wix would have had an old organ here. One of their early either trackers or tubular pneumatics. Um, very possible. Um, so here's, here's some of that stenciling, the circles. It's almost like a Dago Posh kind of a, a feel. I mean, it's, it's proud of it, but then there's, there's paint. You can see where they did that. They would have never stenciled all the way around because there would have been no point. Um, but there's still remnants of it here, the striping. But the thing that caught my eye was this flower pattern, which is really strange. I've never seen this flower pattern and fleur-de-lis that's barely visible on anything except for Wix's Opus 1, which is over there in their shop. They have this in their, dis their display studio. It's, about, it's from about 1906, they believe, but I think it's actually earlier that the brothers had built the instrument and that then they got steeped into organ building later and it became a business. Um, so it's, it's, this is very home done. Um, that they've, the, those three brothers would have gone, seen an instrument, and then come back and try to adapt it themselves. This is not like Kilgan would have stenciled. Kilgan would have stenciled by having like actual decorator supply stencils that they would have bought. And so a lot of Kilgan stem, stenciling and Pfeffer stenciling is all very similar because they would have bought it from the same companies. This indicates that this was done by hand by a person who maybe had an artistic bent. Um, so. I, I would be inclined to think that this pipework here is actually Wix and very old, um, which is really great. Um, means that I have to go back and do a lot more research. <laughs> now this, this is also Wix back here. Here's the Wix stamping. Um, and um, you'll notice it has 111 on here. This isn't the opus number, but the parts number. And so it all corresponds. They would have done this, shipped it in a railroad car. It would have been unloaded at the church by some freight handlers, and then somebody would have had to put all this together. So um, they would have had to have some kind of indication that these parts belonged with the other ones because there's going to be a lot of little legs that, that match. But again, this looks wick. Somebody painted it, I would think. Um, but um, these are what uh, Wix calls horseshoe clips. And this is their connection for the wiring. Um, also kind of uniquely Wix um, in how they did things. So this is uh, all you know, from the same era. Uh, this pipework looks a little different. Um, actually, I know it's different. And I tell you what I see. This pipework, unless they painted over it, and I don't think they did. So. You see that they have screws here for the cap. This, this is the, what they call the cap um, of, of the wood pipe. And so you'd, you'd be able to pull that off of there and work on the, the language. But this cap has no screws. So it's either nailed or glued, which was kind of a primitive thing to do. Um, it would have been something that old tracker builders had done. Uh, you did the video about St. Thomas, uh, Missouri, the, the organ at St. Thomas there. Um, it's a Pfeffer, I think it's the you know, mid-1890s. And, um, and that has a Borden that's all glued caps. So we're talking that, um, that this is, is a practice that would have been done by somebody like Pfeffer. So indicates that maybe this pipework is older and that Wicks incorporated it on their chests and that 
it could possibly even be Pfeffer. The fact that they, this is done with plywood, so this is probably done much later, that there was a hole here and it was offset and, and somebody just didn't like the way it went, but um, to use plywood instead. Um, and the, this foot is older, but not, um, not ancient. Um, Putting all of this stuff together is, is, is really hard to do, but you just kind of have to start piecing it together and, and looking for the little clues. Um, and like you mentioned, the mouth irregularities, things that just kind of add up to being strange. Another thing, um, stopper handles. This stopper handle is almost a complete cylinder, which is not a Wix thing to do. This is a Wix stopper handle. So another strange thing. In the spec, it indicated that the pedal board and the, um, I think it was a subas of some sort, um, and then a, a violon, that they were 30 notes. And even in 1928, when they built the new instrument, they still incorporated everything to include 30 notes instead of the standard 32. Again, another indication that it was an older instrument and a very old instrument because they started doing 32 note pedal boards, you know, early as, as Wix was doing pipe building. You know, this might be the chest that was in front of that other set in there, the one that's turned around backwards. Um, I mean, it looks about the right length and it might fit. Um, then the question would be, is the big guys down here, would they have been tucked away in that bell tower that now has Kilgan pipe work? You know, there's indication that that this was braced with a cross piece. There's the three and the zero. Um, and then down here is the double zero and double zero. So this all came from somewhere and it was attached some other way. So, you know, where did it come from? Was it originally built for that center tower and then they wrote a letter and said, we don't want this here, we want it to be shorter. And so they had to move it. Um, to block the window. The work. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, <laughs> organ builders now and organ builders then were faced with the same problem, which was we get it built and then the church decides to change their mind about something and we have to adapt. There, those channels you pointed out were on the middle tower, which no longer speaks. Exactly. So that would make sense that, that there used to be a taller speaking bay here. And now, in order to let the window be seen from downstairs, they move those pipes over to the side. Yeah, that looks like that would have fit. Yeah. So the, these pipes were from somewhere else. Um, they're dummies. There's no language in them. Um, they were painted a, a gold, but you can see that there's remnants of the, the stenciling of what they were before. Um, they have just some kind of simple band on them. I don't know if they might have had something special done down here. Um, I do see indications of an older um, gold paint underneath, but we would expect that they had been painted before. Um, but this is, this is kind of a, a common thing. The metal's really light, I mean, and, and so that's kind of common for being a dummy. But this is a Kilgan thing to do. Um, you know, I, I mentioned earlier about having a hook. So there's a, a hook on the, on the rack that these are supposed to slip into. And a Wix way to do it would be to have a bracket and then it would slip down in. And most other companies would have done the same thing. Kilgan, on the other hand, would have had a hook that stands out and hooks into these guys. So this is very Kilgan. So another part of your video, um, it, when you entered into the uh, case, I instantly knew it was Wix. This is a Wix trademark, uh, not only for the electrical system, um, having the return wires braided like this um, and going into, and, and I mean return because the, the action is on the inside of the chest and they would have had to have had some um, form of getting the negative um, power. And so this is, this is very much a trademark of Wix of the 20s. But then also this little cleat here, which holds the box onto the chest, the swell box that is onto the chest. That was totally a Wix thing to do. These legs are Wix. Um, everything about this just screams Wix, even including this 1940s tremolo. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely a, a hodgepodge of different pieces, but this is really old and, and very Wix. And so if we continue going inside. So another thing I noticed is this chest and this design, which is uniquely Wix also. Um, Wix action being electrical, um, direct electric in fact is their their name for it and not needing pneumatics necessarily there's no place for a, a smaller uh, magnet it's all internal and so I, I'm seeing these toe boards which I know from many times of having to rebuild these um, Wix instruments of the 20s that this is this is kind of uniquely Wix of the 20s to have these wires and I have to be careful not to, to disturb too much of it but and then also these little clips on the top um, all of it indicated Wix of the 20s which I found very interesting 
Um, not having the mouths of the pipes forward, I couldn't really tell what the pipe work was. Um, I find that very strange that they would have had it reversed, but after coming in here and doing a little bit more looking, it was there was another set of pipes right here at some point in time, and they probably would have blocked these mouths. So they chose to put these reversed, and then they would have had something facing forward right here. Um, uh, the other thing that they could have done is just had a brace in here um, and, and had moved things around. Because, of course, this instrument's been um, changed quite a few times since its original installation, we have to kind of start piecing together what has moved and um, what, what is originally in its place, looking for joints um, that have changed, like these right here, actually, on the floor. This is an indication that there was a piece of bracing or some kind of floor frame that didn't fit or that maybe got moved, and so they had to fill the pieces in. That's a good sign of something having changed. And you have to make a decision of whether or not it was done at installation or if it was done after um, when somebody else had modified it. So I, I reversed one of the pipes to look at the stamping, and in the process I found the Wix opus number on here. Um, an opus number being the um, number of organ that it was, and so this is Wix's 812, um, um, 812th instrument of theirs, um, or at least that they considered a new instrument. Um, this though, this is the telltale sign of any maker, is their stamping. Um, how they labeled their pipework will tell you everything about um, the company or who, who it was that, that built it. Because sometimes they make odd sets just to experiment or to, to make um, uh, something a little bit, you know, unique for the instrument. So you have to kind of look to see if, is it really, in this case, is this really Wix? And I know that as being a Wix stamp just from many, many, many pipes having looked at that same stamp um, for their wood pipes. But that leads us to um, another part that's very interesting is this behind it. So these guys here, they don't match anything, um, and they certainly don't match the, the board we just looked at um, with the Wix stamping on it. And I see another Opus number, which is 4275, and um, I think I have the 4275 book here, um, so we can look at that. If not, I have to go back and do more research um, to see whether or not this was uh, an add-on um, by Kilgan, or if it was an add-on by someone else and they just used another Kilgan organ. Um, but, so what makes me think that this is Kilgan is Kilgan often made the swoop for the upper lip. It's very unique, um, but I mean there were other builders that did that, but uh, it's, it's very unique to Kilgan um, in many ways, just the way that it's done. Um, <clears throat> but the other thing, the thing that always sets apart Kilgan pipework, uh, wood pipework that is, is the back of the Bordens uh, or wood flutes will have a, a notch cut right in the back of this. You see how this is real sharp, uh, just an actual point, as you would expect it to be. It's just a gigantic box. But Kilgan would break the edge of it. Um, and I don't know if I can reverse one of those. They're pretty heavy, so we might have to see about looking from behind. Um, but that's a really good indication of Kilgan pipework is if it has that. And you can see that here somebody used a sharpie to write on there um, what the note names are because there is no stamping anywhere, um, which sometimes Kilgan did, sometimes they didn't. Um, so it's, it's possible that this is Kilgan add-on from later, um, but it also could be that it was Kilgan um, that was borrowed from another instrument somewhere else. Oh, here's another. Here's a really good example of how the, the base molding um, was chopped um, and then moved. Um, it extends into the case, um, which is not something you would do if you're building a cabinet. You would just uh, butt it up against the other. So this is that bump out that Wix added. So they would have taken the return of the case, cut it, and then would have fitted in here. Um, and this is and this is Wix wood for sure. And so is, this is a Wix cleat. So that makes lots of sense. Um, those little things that are individual to each organ company because you know they were mass manufacturing this stuff um, they would have built it over and over and over and over and over again the exact same way so you start to see these little patterns and they would have used the same types of wood and everything so this is a Wix cleat for sure um, which gives me an indication that you know this is obviously a Wix ad and you can also tell that the wood doesn't look the same that the finish doesn't look the same this is from the original case and so if you look up here this is the original toe board and you can see where there's some kind of a channel that they would have cut by hand 
um, and then had an action of some sort to, to allow the pipes to play. Um, and, and so this was, this was the original tow board. And then Wix added a uh, chest on top of this, and so they, they, they put all of that in there. So somebody's put flexible wind line in here, but it would have probably been um, actual uh, tin or galvanized wind line at the time. But so here's another uh, piece of evidence of an older instrument. But you can see here where the, the tongue and groove wood that I was talking about, that whoever did this did a really nice job because they even cut the sides at an angle so that it wasn't real sharp. But they used nails to put this in. And then the later additions, the panels are bigger as we described, and then they use screws. Um, you know, screws were a common practice, of course, in organ building, but um, in, in woodworking, maybe not so much. So oftentimes, um, organ companies were really focused on building the mechanics of the organ and that they would have a cabinet shop build um, their casework. And so um, they would, the cabinet shops wouldn't have used screws for that, they would have used nails. So a, another indication that this might have been an older style of doing this or that they would have used another company. So we have to kind of weigh all of that out and look. And every, every indication is, is that this is just much older than this part here. This is another thing that um, is indicative of, of Wick's chests of the 1920s in particular. These are um, bottom boards. This is the bottom of the chest. And the bottom of the chest being solid like this indicates that the action is all up inside the chest and that there's no mechanics or, or, or uh, channels or magnet boards down here. Um, that's very uniquely Wick's. Um, no other organ company um, would have done that at the time. Again, the stoppers aren't wigs. This is a different instrument, although on this one it has written 812, so it was meant for this instrument from Wix. It was originally an F, and then now it's stamped E and stamped stop diapase, and this is a Wix stamp as well. That is questionable if that's a Wix stamp, but there's pencil writing, E and F on here. So this is an old set. Um, pencil writing indicates that. Um, this was definitely from a tracker. The other thing that they did, or at least a tracker or a tubular pneumatic, so you've got the hole that this foot goes in and it's offset. So they would have squeezed as much pipe work as they could onto an old chest and they would have had the feet offset so that the, the wood pipes, the, the squares, would have all been able to touch each other instead of being spread out like they are now. Um, so Wix definitely reused this set. Um, I, I think in the Kilgan records it talks more about what the appointment of all of these strings are. Um, this is a, definitely an old set also. Um, instead of stamping when, the, when they were building these sets, they would write on them, and it might be hard to see because these are pretty dirty. Um, but this one says uh, A-sharp and solitional. Um, it's also on the foot, so that this was their way of, of cutting out all the different pieces and then writing on them what they were. Here's another set, and it goes all the way down. Um, it's definitely Kilgan um, bases. Uh, indication is this, that Kilgan used this friction tape on their tuning slides, um, but also just the way that it looks, um, pipe construction and everything, it, it looks like Kilgan. But this is interesting. Flatting is not Kilgan. Um, this stamping kind of indicates that it could be Kilgan, but it also looks like Gottfried, and I've seen a bit of Gottfried pipework that looks like this. Um, so who knows where this came from? The trumpet you've already mentioned is new. Um, it looks like it's uh, within the last 20 or 30 years. So this is another string in here, and it's stamped solitional. Um, it, it's definitely Kilgan stamping, um, and just the, the slotting and everything about it looks like it's Kilgan. The, the nicking is really fine and really nicely done, and has a skive on the upper lip like Kilgan would have done for their string voicing. So all of it looks um, to me like this is actually a Kilgan set, this solitional here. This is an interesting swell box. Wicks construction, um, probably from the 19 teens all the way to the 1940s, um, would have used. Um, spruce tongue and groove. So this is, you know, big pieces of spruce with a, a tongue and then the groove, and they would have been spliced together, and they would have made a gigantic box, having it on its side, and then sometimes having like the back there, the wall standing straight up with the um, the, the bears or the uh, the supports going vertical, um, and then they would have had a cross member, and so you can see the support was here. So this roof had been chopped and added on to later 
Um, but the strange thing about it is, is it's on the wrong side. Um, I'm not trying to pick on whomever did it, I just don't understand what was here. And maybe there was another set of pipes that we're unaware of that was up in this space. But usually if you're going to extend the top of a, a swell box, it's on the side with the bases. So um, who knows what the, the thinking was. Maybe they changed this box around, they turned it around at some point in time, or turned the chest around, but that seems quite illogical and improbable. So another thing that I noticed in, in your video um, was this lattice work um, for the opening. Um, I've seen that on so many Wix instruments, um, but I can't say that it's uniquely Wix because I've seen it in Kilgans also um, on the sides of the instruments. Um, but you know, some of the reasoning for that might be that you know Wix and Kilgan shared a draftsman at one point in time. The man's name was A.J. Catt, K-A-T-T. Um, and he was a really uh, instrumental person in designing these wonderful cases of Wix instruments from the teens to the 1930s. He designed the Rock Church case. He designed uh, St. Cecilia's Francis de Sales instrument. Um, uh, there was tons of instruments that he was responsible for drafting the design um, and then doing the, the, the actual mechanics as well. Um, and he worked for Kilgan. He's in, in fact, one of the old Kilgan employee photos um, from the turn of the century has him sitting there. Um, and so, you know, those guys, they bring that information with them and that, and that focus that they have to their next companies. And eventually the companies kind of morph into including little bits of them. So here again, you know, this isn't exactly a Wix thing to do. It could also just be uh, something that AJ Cat decided to do. And he could have designed this instrument when it was a Kilgan, if it was a Kilgan then. So it looks like we have diapason, which I wanted to look at that. This is indicated on the wick spec that it's old, and it certainly is. Um, they replaced the toes. They might have been collapsing, but this is old pipework, very, very much so. The spotting is very um, understated, which means it's got a little bit more heavier lead in it. Um, gives it a nice thick sound. Um, so the indication is this is slotted, um, very common of, of diapasons of this era. There's nothing uniquely a any one builder, so I can't say it's Kilgan. I can't say it would have been something of Wix. Um, Wix was buying their pipework from the Samuel Pierce company when they first started doing things. So one of the things that I look for in older instruments was an organ at Hamilton Christian Church here in St. Louis that had um, Samuel Pierce reading Pennsylvania um, stamped on it and uh, or written and uh, so I look for that on the pipework to see if I can find some indication and the first thing to do like here we are here's something it's like an R and an S and something in between oh no oh, there's another initial in here J G P N S that can't be J G Pfeffer is it yes this is the first pipe that's made out of spotted metal most pipe shops would have um, had a separate zinc making place or they would have bought their zincs. Um, zinc being the metal that they used for facade pipes and for the bigger pipes. And then they would have made spotted metal in their own shop and they would have had it um, in a different shop that is. And they would have, um, the, the workers there would have done um, different stamping or indications because the zincs would have been in different places and everything. But a lot of times the voicers will sign the first pipe and that's what I look for, the first spotted metal pipe, that is. And this says JG P something S. Yeah, JG P and S. JG Pfeffer and Sons. There you go. Here we are, folks. There's the definition of what this organ was. Wow. So let's go down here to the four foot octave. These are zincs. Here's our first spotted metal and see if we can find. The same thing. Looks very similar. It does. Oh, here's another indication that it could be Pfeffer. So Pfeffer would indicate what note numbers, or sorry, what rank numbers they were. They would step. And this has a, a number on it. Looks like number nine. So this ornate script is hard to read. But also, again, it says JGP and S. And the sad thing is, is a lot of these organ companies, their records got assumed, like Pfeffer was bought out by Kilgan. So, you know, Kilgan sucked them in and took them, um, 
took all of their information and they would use that to go and sell or you know just keep it and you know Wix bought out um, the Hinners company and somewhere in all of the Wix files somewhere is a Hinners Opus list because that was a part of the deal and some of the guys that I worked with when I worked at Wix discussed about how they had seen a book called Hinners Opus list where is it now? We don't know. Same thing with the, the information from Pfeffer. We just have to kind of piece this stuff together. So it's actually really neat to know that there was another Pfeffer instrument here. So this is the doppel flute. It's Wix for sure. Um, and in fact, in the spec that Corey Wright found for me, it is um, stated as being Wix. But interestingly enough, the stopper handles are different. An experimental stage for Wix, or maybe they were building so many instruments that they couldn't, uh, at the time, they were building a lot of instruments, that they had to buy stopper handles from supply companies. Another interesting thing that I saw while you were demonstrating, um, you pulled out a, a doppel flute, and it had a um, flat upper lip like that, which is common in melodias, and like in that set. But there's the pipe next to it, and what the mouth would have looked like. That's definitely Wix, and that is strangely the wrong direction <laughs> they're about the same scale though so i mean it, it all looks like it fits so here's the oboe gamba that would have probably been in the original and uh swell box and it says oboe on it and this is the this is what told me that something was amiss and it being a kilgan it's definitely a wix uh, labial oboe and um has the same voicing they didn't change it they just moved it so Let's see, there's another set in here. This thing is a plethora of strings, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Ooh, this is heavy. Ah, this is Kilgan. Um, this is Hoyt metal. Very common metal. Um, it has kind of like a greenish shine to it. Kilgan used this a lot. Um, if I rub enough, it'll get real bright and shiny. Maybe. It gets a little better. But anyway, this is definitely Kilgan. This is something they used all the time. And in fact, they used a, um, this metal in, in just about every rank other than um, flutes, oddly enough. So here's an old set. Stamped mellow, but it's also written and in pencil. This is older than this instrument um, indicates. Um, by this pipework, the 20s pipework, but it matches this instrument here, so that would make sense. And here again, another indication that it was tracker because the, the feet are offset like this. The stop bases are painted and look like wicks. Now I'm going to get back here. The only thing that doesn't look like wicks about them, or at least from what I can see, yeah, I can't see the mouse. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah, it does look like Wix. Stamp Melodia and has the same stamp. The only thing that's a little interesting is, is that uh, they, they don't have a third screw here, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, I wonder if Wix took a forefoot and made it into a... It's very possible. Very possible. Well, you got all this tongue and groove stuff in here. The lead paint. Um, but the, all this tongue and groove that would have been common in the back of a pfeffer, so that kind of makes sense. Um, but they would have been common in the back of any instrument. This is the, the, the day's plywood, I guess. Um, man, the, the blower that was in here, good lord. That is a big motor. I, I don't know why, I mean, if they had aspirations of building a huge instrument in here, I guess that makes sense, but this thing is huge. And it has a very, pretty big generator still. So that would have been what powered the instrument um, before modern day power supplies. You had to actually um, generate electricity with this guy. His name plate. Electric Specialty Company. But that's a big blower motor. That's that's huge. And it's not used, of course, um, now. The, the new one's on top of it, but man. In smaller blowers with power 30 rank instruments. And I think that, that was installed in 1925. I think that's what's indicated. You know, Brent, I'm wondering if that original facade fit in between the little 45s that came out of the wall here and it was tucked back in here, and that some of the swell boxes in this room and then they moved it forward.
yeah, that's it. And a generator and a pulley. So this talks about the blower and generator being installed um, in 1933, February of 1933. So this is the oldest one. The front of the book is from 1917 to 1918. This paper is so thin. Here it is, 3427, and it says, um, so we are to furnish the above with a half horsepower Emerson forge blower to install same at our regular price. Do not install same until after Easter. They are to do all the tin work, electric work, and etc. as per our regular clause. Um, so this is just basically the information that is being sent out to the um, shop as to what to get together. Um, but it's a regular forge and it said 16 inch valve on it which a valve um, is usually for a reservoir or a static reservoir, but um, it doesn't say that there would be a static here. So I'd imagine it's probably one of the Spencer inline valves, but I see 16 inch and I, I was thinking that can't be right, but now that I've seen the blower, that can be right. <laughs> so in 1925, they, April 7th of 1925 to be exact, uh, they installed a new blower. Um, but yet later on it indicates that they installed a different blower. So this is a half horse. That is not a half horse. That's a big one. So um, I don't know if they did this and then Wicks put the instrument in and it had wind sag. And then um, in 1933, the organist was tired of the wind sag when playing full organ and they, they decided then to uh, um, replace the blower. But so that, this is from the earliest that Kilgan has in their records is 1925 and it's just to replace the blower. But then you go into opus 4950 and Opus 4963, both for this church. Um, all four of these numbers are for the church. Um, July 22nd of 1932, um, and it says job or stock number 11050. Solitional, eight foot, tenor C, 13 to 61. That explains that set in there. A regular size church tremolo, which I think is this one up front. Um, a stop action for the tremolo, a stop action tablet, or a tablet also for the tremolo, and a, a stop action um, for a Vox Celeste. So very interesting. Voice the solutional loud and keen on four inches of wind and A440 pressure. And that's for St. John Nepomuk. Now, that was $335 at the time. <laughs> what year was that? <laughs> 1932, summer of 32. So Kilgan assigned opus numbers to everything. Um, whether it was a full instrument or part. 4963, here we are, St. John Nepomuk. Um, edition of a 61 note Vox Humana in action. Heavy scale 61 note Vox Humana complete with action above for the church. Vox Humana to be played from um, Swell Manual, $400 within 10 months without interest. Salesman's commission, $8. Drayage 10, financing 50. LFAP, 250. Actual sales price, 400. Price uh, realized 332, um, sales efficiency only 32%. Poor sales department. That's it. So that's the extent that the Kilgan records say that there's Kilgan. So it's very interesting. This place must have been hopping um, to be able to do that, um, to, to continue to add things to the organ. Um, doesn't seem like much, but in 1932, things were pretty tight. Um, so to spend close to $2,000 when a car only cost about 800 it's pretty incredible. So, you know, the, the linchpin in all of this is it has a Kilgan console. So we know that it has wicks in it. We now know that it has some pfeffer in it. Why does it have a Kilgan console? And, and um, you know, the files that I have didn't indicate that they built a console. So I, I was very interested. As soon as I got here, I wanted to take the console apart and look for this. Um, it's opus number 7087, so um, I guess I will do my best to try to find that in the books and find out why it's not in the list that I have. Um, I knew that the list wasn't very well put together, um, but uh, then that there were some discrepancies, but uh, it might be that this was at the, the war period. It could be also, and that might explain why it's 1940, you know, that, that, that you got a date from. Um, but it also could be when um, the company was starting to falter and they didn't keep very good records. Um, but either way, we now have an idea of when this console was originally built.
Chris, thank you for uh, helping us guide us through this instrument again and getting a closer look at, at what we've seen before. Uh, it was nice to hear it, but you had so much more insight into a lot of what was there. That was great fun. Uh, and it, who knew? I mean, there's Wix, there's Kilgan, and we found J.G. Pfeffer originally had an instrument here. Yeah. So what does this tell you about this instrument and its history in, in this church, just from what you've seen? Wow. Uh, the church must have been really active. Um, obviously, it has a proud tradition, and, and they would have found music to be very important because they had an organ for a very long time, it seems. Um, and then they were interested in keeping up with it and expanding the instrument. They must have had somebody here that was a real go-getter for a music director. I mean, to, just to have that blower, I mean, somebody had some big plans. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I think that they planned on having a really, really big instrument Well, here. they could have. There's a lot of space up here. There still. is a lot of space. Um, and, you know, even in the during the Depression, the height of the Depression is when they were making plans for the future. So, yeah. And this church is still here as a result of a lot of people's foresight. So. Yeah. Well, thank you again. It's really exciting to get to see there. I'm glad you have access to all of these resources that have been saved. Uh, it's my dream someday that a lot of that will be accessible to anybody that wants to see that. And I know you feel that way too. I do. Uh, so you don't have to go looking through books every time somebody <laughs> calls you. Yeah. And it's my hope that the Oregon Media Foundation will be assisting with putting that material online. But of course, we can only do that with the help of our supporters, our donors and our sponsors. Uh, it's, it's March and we're getting ready right up to our normal fundraising season. Uh, that's when we turn to you who enjoy the content we put online, our, our audio stations and these videos uh, to ask you to help support our projects. And that, and you know, projects include other things like getting uh, the Kilgan archives online. So we're looking for assistance with that, not just monetary assistance, but we're probably gonna need some extra hands to help make that happen because there's a lot of material. Yeah, there's 28 of those books. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's gonna be a big project, but we've got the groundwork going. We just need your help to make it happen. To help support the Oregon Media Foundation, just go to Oregon.media and click on support. We're a 501c3 organization, so your contributions can be tax deductible. I know right now things are a little uh, hairy and iffy. People are unsure of what the future will hold, but we know with your help, uh, we can continue to document organs like these and preserve their history and uh, keep things alive for people with the internet. Thank you again, Chris. It's my pleasure. Thank I'll you be Bruce. calling you the next time I run into a mystery <laughs> like this, and we'll be having you again. Uh, and I hope you'll, we'll take you along with us next time, too. Thanks for joining us.